In this video, I'm going to show you what a perfectly laid out, high converting, SEO optimized affiliate web page looks like. And I'm going to show you how to create it for yourself. This is the same web page layout that I used to increase the affiliate commissions across my website by 53%. Do you know what that means? If my site was making $5,000 per month before, it's now making over $7,500 now. But the fun doesn't stop there. This theme layout also has tremendous SEO benefits. Time on page has gone up by 23.2% and bounce rate has dropped by 13.8%. Both of these user metrics are critical for SEO. Just look at the traffic graph for the site I first rolled this out on. The page we're going to look at today is for what's known as a roundup post. When people Google terms like best golf range finder, they end up on pages like this, a roundup post that gives a list of what this website thinks are the best golf range finders. By the way, this layout is absolute and I'm going to tell you why soon. Roundups are triggered by keywords with best in it. Best wireless router, best VPN service, best cat shaver. Why should you care so much about these keywords? Because for making affiliate money, they're the best. No pun intended. That's whoa, 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 whoa. They have the largest search volume and they convert the best. If someone is searching for best cat shaver, they are ready AF to buy one and shave some cats. So for this video, my layout will be focusing on the optimal design for roundup posts. Bear in mind, it took a long time for my layout to get to this point. My affiliate business, Leadspring, went through years of testing to get it where we want it. We're actually on version 13 of the design I'm about to share with you. If you appreciate the effort, let me know by smashing the like button. Thanks. Now, in order for you to fully understand why the optimal design is so good, you need to understand what makes a bad design. This is what I call a terrible layout. You might be thinking, what the hell is wrong with this? Looks pretty standard. Is that my site? Let's go from top to bottom to point out what went wrong. Right up here at the top, we have a typical above the fold section. There's the introduction paragraph here. It's fine, nothing wrong with that. Here's a product comparison table, which I have a bone to pick with. Product comparison tables are used to give a quick answer to which products are the best, and they always get the most conversions, unless you totally blow it. The problem with this comparison table is that there's no rankings. They're not labeled, this product is number one, this product is number two. Your visitors never get a quick and clear answer to which one is best, which is the entire reason they search for best ping pong table or whatever. It's the same issue with this travesty of a comparison table. The ping pong table in the first position has five stars, so does the third, so does the fifth. Which one is the best? In addition, the text on these CTAs is the absolute worst. Check price on Amazon? <clears throat> Sorry, just threw up in my mouth. If you tell someone where they can buy something, guess what? They don't need to click your affiliate link to find out. Still not convinced it makes a big difference? I taught this trick to my friend Amache in the affiliate lab and he said, it was the biggest change I ever saw for one simple tweak. 100% increase on CTR. You told me to one, remove the price from the page, which is another reason that people won't click, and two, change buttons from check on Amazon to check price. And his earnings doubled. Another faux pas is the sidebar on the right. If you want to maximize conversions, minimize distractions. Now I want to zoom out and take a look at this entire layout as a whole. There's a detailed product description for the number one product. It's a shame that this product wasn't labeled number one in the table at the top. Typical pros and cons, then product number two and so forth with the buyer's guide at the bottom. Typical stuff. Let me ask you a question. Do the call to action buttons stand out to you? Do they draw your eye? No, not really. Of course not, because there's a billion freaking colors on this page. How can anything stand out when it looks like a unicorn vomited on this layout? It looks like a damn bag of Skittles was dumped out on your coffee table. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to fix this right now. Let's take a peek at the work of art layout that's been the result of years of refinement. Before I zoom in and start explaining this layout bit by bit, what's the first thing you notice? That's right, the call to action buttons. They pop off the page because this layout manages its colors like Crips and Bloods. As you can see, the base of the website is green and the CTA colors are red. Why did I choose red. Google the keyword color wheel and you're going to find something that looks like this. Find your website's main color green. Then look on the opposite end and you'll find red. Red is a complementary but completely opposite color from green. That means it's going to pop off the page. And because I've been really good about only using greens and reds, your eyes gravitate to those juicy buttons that make money. Let's start to take a look at the small details from top to bottom. Starting with the above the fold section. Your job above the fold is to do two things. Give them an answer as soon as possible and encourage them to read if they want more information. Here's the above the fold section for the kick-ass layout. Up here at the top we have our hero image and a place for the title of the article. You want to use a big font for your title. It's your headline that screams, yo this article is about the best cat shavers of the year, you're in the right place. But a key feature of this hero image is this last updated text at the top. By adding a recent date to this text and placing it right at the top, I was able to reduce bounce rate by 6% and increase time on page by 11%. Down here we have a placeholder for the introduction paragraph. I know this video is about design and layout, but don't sleep on introduction paragraph copy. This is where you hook the reader and convince them to read more. 
I left a link in the description to a video that'll help you out with that, so check it out after you finish here. By the way, I'd like to give a shout out to Otis, the sponsor of this video. Otis is a premium domain marketplace and is my one-stop shop for money site domains. I've been using Otis domains for two main purposes. First is for building websites with a head start, instead of having to start from scratch. This site is only a few months old and it's already getting 100 visitors per day. Second, Otis domains are great for 301 redirects to give an instantaneous boost to an existing website. The domains on Otis are all hand-picked and vetted for quality. They stock powerful domains with great backlink profiles in a variety of niches. And they also cover your ass by making sure that all the domains have a clean history and have never been used for any funny business. Sign up for Otis, use the link in the description, and get a $100 welcome bonus in your dashboard. Now back to the video. Next we have a side-by-side -side three item table here at the top. Remember when I said we want to give people who are looking for a quick answer what they want? That's why we dropped this above the fold. Notice how it's extremely clear which product is the best. The editor's choice. There's no guessing left to the reader. In the text section underneath each product, notice this bullet point list here of custom criteria. What is custom criteria? In April 2021, Google released the product reviews update which added a list of items they're looking for if you're writing product reviews. This line here, you should provide quantitative measurements of how a product measures up in various categories of performance. And this one here, you should identify key decision making factors for the products category and how the product performs in those areas. For example, a car review might determine that fuel economy, safety, and handling are key decision making factors and rate performance in those areas. What this means to me is that Google wants you to compare products based on criteria that actually matters to those products. If you're reviewing protein powder, you should be rating them based on protein content, taste, ingredient quality, and price. That's what these placeholders are for. Now before we move on down the layout, notice the text on the CTA buttons. For non-Amazon affiliate buttons, I've found the best converting text to be click for best price. This is based on dozens of tests using Optimizely A-B testing software. For Amazon links, check latest price, check current price, check price are all legit. Just showing these two tables side by side, on the left we have the typical table you find in roundup posts and on the right we have the optimized version. Even just by inspection you can easily see which one is better. This is what the optimized table looks like on my site diggitymarketing.com and trust me it converts like mad. Now let's move down to the detailed product review sections. This is the first product recommendation clearly labeled as number one, meaning make no mistake you should buy this one. Then we restate the custom criteria to make the EAT gods happy. Notice the difference between the pros and cons section between the bad and the good layout. Now I get why you would want to make the pros section green and the con section red. But if you do it hardcore like the left option, all that red distracts from the CTA color. Instead, be subtle with the red as with the layout on the right, and the CTA continues to pop off the page. Next, we have the runner-up product reviews, which are very similar, the buyer's guide section, and then we have a frequently asked questions section. Every product review, whether that be a single product review or a roundup, should have an FAQ section. I mean, that's the entire point for people searching for these articles, to get their questions answered about these products. Where do you go to source these questions? Directly from Google. Google your main keyword, best cat shaver. Then find the people also ask section. These questions should be added to and answered in your FAQ section using an NLP friendly format. If you're not familiar with NLP, check out my video on how to write content that ranks number one on Google. Link in the description. Then we have our conclusion and another display for the number one recommended product. Why do we put this at the end here? A lot of readers like to skim articles, and when they've done enough skimming, they will jump to the end of the article looking for their answer. Install a user tracking software like Hotjar and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's for these people that you want to remind them, hey, this is the number one product and here's where you buy it for the best price possible. Here's an example of an end of article product display at diggitymarkin.com. <laughs> Very nice. Next, we have an author box, another offering to the gods of EAT, and then a comment section. Depending on the search and the niche, I've indeed found that a comment section can be a ranking factor. Check your competition to see if an active comment section is the norm for your search term. So now that you've seen the bee's knees layout, how do you actually create it? I'm gonna give you two options. The first is a bit more challenging, but it's the best in the long run, and that's for you to code up your own custom theme. The advantage of a custom theme is speed. You'll create placeholders for all these design elements, and it'll be streamlined to load only the elements you need. You also find that uploading new content will be faster because you have a cookie cutter theme that is expecting a certain amount of content and images in the right places. The disadvantage is the process of getting it created. You'll most likely need to hire a developer, and you need to keep that dev on hand for maintenance and upgrades. That said, I hired a dev on Upwork that created our whole theme for $1,500. It's really not that expensive. I'll soon be discussing this process and possibly even giving away my theme in the Affiliate Lab, my course on affiliate marketing, which happens to go on sale this Black Friday for 50% off, so make sure 
sure to bookmark the link in the pinned comment. Another alternative to creating this theme is to craft it using a page builder like Elementor. Elementor can be used to drag and drop elements to create your comparison tables, your product displays, and your pros and cons boxes. Then you can save that template to use in your roundups going forward. Use the Elementor link in the description to sign up with a 30 day money back guarantee. You'll also be supporting the channel. High five! If you'd like me to make a walkthrough video on how to create this theme with Elementor, let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.